Hey everyone, RuneCloak here, and today I've got a Skellige deck. So it's Skellige Rain, but it's more on the beast side of things. And I've seen a couple of these floating around, um, different ladder and uh, ladder and streams and stuff like that. Like I think Lyro's gone really well with um, a Renfree version of this deck, and there was somebody posted on Reddit about like a Kraken Renfree deck. Um, so I decided to take those into inspiration and go with my own version of it. So this is Patricidal Fury. Um, we got Patricidal Fury. It's a good point slam on its own. You can also put your you can put your sirens, um, you can play them into rows with rain or storm for them to just instantly come back to you. You can use them for bloodthirst value, which we have some bloodthirst payoffs with Jangerfret, um, Feral Bonds, which I'll talk about in a moment, and Sov. Sov is one of the win cons on this deck. Um, he's really only answerable by Curse of Corruption or like uh, uh, Igni or something like that. And if you have Last Say, then he's just totally safe. And he can play for like 20 points. We have a ton of beasts in this deck, of course, for Kelpie, for Kraken, for Flaminica. So you have a lot of variation on Sov. You can get really greedy and go for like an 8 point Raging Bear for that Sov value. Make him be like 28. Um, most often you're going for like Squirrel or Savage Bear there for just the 4 points. Or just to like, you know, be a little cheeky with it. If you've missed like your Fakusha, for instance, you can Sov your Fakusha. But, you know, that's not what it's about, but you could. Um, or also if your opponent is really blocking the boot, um, blocking your bloodthirst, and maybe you've had to use leader charges earlier in the game, you always have these seagulls to just make a little little 14 point so It's not great, but you know, if you're desperate, it's something you can do. Um, let's see. Again, let's talk about the Feral Bonds, because that's part of the, the point of having Patches Lot of Fury as a leader, and also I think they're really good cards in this deck. You can play the wolves into your rain row or your storm row, which is good. You want to sometimes you end up playing like rain in rows that don't have that many units just to get like your fish out, for instance, um, which is important. You want to thin these out early and often, but you can put like leader charges if you need to, or like these feral bonds. Like you put the skeleton wolves in the row with, with like rain, or put them in your kraken row with storm, and they'll come back to you for a nice two point immune unit that also can be boosted by kelpie, which is just a little little cheeky there, a little cute play, but. Additionally, the Feral Bonds, which makes them really nice, is they're good finishers. Like, after the a round goes on long enough, you should get some good Bloodthirst value. Like, let's say it's your Sov round, and you feel like your, your opponent can't boost them back up. You can have those Leader Charges on the board, or just from your Rain and Storm hitting things throughout the game. You get some Bloodthirst there. It also puts one Bloodthirst on, on the opposite row right away. This deck doesn't play Highland Warlords. It's not like a Warrior's deck, so we're just doing one damage to the Wolves. And then, again, they go into that Rain or Storm row, and they'll come back for Beast for us. But also, we should be able to get Bloodthirst 3 pretty easily, pretty reliably, which is great for your Kraken. Because that's one of the things with Kraken, right? You play it on the enemy row, um, more in a long round, but it'll damage itself three times by Storm, and then how do you finish it off? So you can play things like a Gutting Slash, which is okay, um, but Feral Bond is so much better, in my opinion. There's a lot of good Warriors. Some of the better ones are like Brockvar, the Brockvar stuff, really. Brockvar Hunter is great in this deck. We play a ton of beasts. Again, it's a beast deck, so you can get like you know, doing damage every other turn or every turn if you play keep playing beast, and then also get to be more bloodthirst. Also, for champions charge is a bloodthirst payoff. Good tall removal. Um, Revakvar Archer is a great card in this deck. You can do a lot of damage, um, especially after the Kraken. And let's say they boosted up the Kraken. Revakvar Archer is a good way to potentially damage it back down to earth. Um, champions charge is another way you can finish off the Kraken if it goes too tall from your opponent. Um, but often you can just do Brockfire Warrior, so after two turns of Storm, you can go Feral Bond, put a wolf into that Storm row for the last turn, the wolf will come back to you in your turn, but also you can do Brockfire Warrior, damage another enemy unit by three, damage the Kraken by two, and then another unit by one. But damaging the Kraken by two there, it'll go to one, and the Storm will finish it off, and it'll come back to your side. Um, you gotta be careful with Kraken though, because if it comes back to your side too early, your opponent can kill it, and then it goes to their side, and you know, it's a little hard to get it back after that. Again, we have Champion Charge, we have Gutting Slash, or maybe like a Brockfar Archer, but it's a little more tricky to get it back the second time. So, you know, get get good timing on that, really. Um, this deck also has a lot of engine value through rain, which is nice. Krakens really are only like threat to be answered, um, which often gets answered, but Kelpie puts five turns of rain in the deck. We have 15 beasts. So you'll get those rain ticks going on as you go, and initially, initial value from Kelpie is really nice, just boosting up the beast you have on the board, um, and putting rain there again. The other way we have for rain, um, again, we want to thin the anglerfish, anglerfish out early, so Kelpie is one of the main ways, but we also have double half row. If at least one of them sticks, you can get some rain on the other row, and then with Kelpie, um, anglerfish will come back, and if you can do that in round one or two, all the better. 
Um, in round three, you can play cards like Fakusha or Kraken. Kraken's a card you could play in like round one or a long round two. Um, if the moment's right for it and you feel like your opponent's not going to pass too soon and just leave you with um, a lot to catch up on. Because Kraken's not great tempo initially. It, it all depends on how many units your opponent has. And um, it, Kelpie can be good with the Kraken if you have a lot of beasts. And then the Storm will boost all those units at the same time. So that can be a good tempo play. But otherwise, yeah, again, Kraken's probably more for a long round three, ideally. But... If you played earlier, that can help than the Anglerfish, which are nice, because they're they're not good bricks to get into. And this deck does have five bricks with Roach, Best Boy, and the double Anglerfish. Um, but they're also our thinning plays, so, you know, they're w definitely worth it, even with that potential. And you just gotta be smart about it. Um, Axel is just a great mid-range point slam Skellige card. Let's see, we got double lock. This deck can get out-controlled, especially, like I said, we don't really have engines too much. So having those locks can be really nice to just deal with a big threat. Um... They're very reliable too. Jenga, you can just use a leader charge or one of these other means of getting bloodthirst that I've talked about. Even a feral bond where you don't get the wolf back immediately, it'll just be on their board and they can't really boost it too much. Um, and then you'll have your Jengi value. Uh, and Dora Gary is just a free lock. Let's see, we also have a one-off gutting slash in the stack. Again, bloodthirst is pretty pretty reliable and it can just be a good way to answer an engine or to combine it with rain to do even more damage. Uh, we've got double seagull. Good way to put Bloodthirst on the opponent's board, or get some carryover, or just put some beasts in the graveyard in the same round that you have them for like Flaminica. Squirrel is just a good tech card, also a beast, which is great. Savage Bear, also just good value. And again, they're fours for Sove. So there's a lot of like mixed synergies in this deck. I also put a Heat Wave um, here, just kind of a catch all control card. I like Heat Wave, it's non devotion anyway. Um, also non Ren Free, non Golden Necker, so it kind of makes sense to put it in. And there's a lot of times where you're really wanting that extra kind of hard removal and being able to answer scenarios all the better especially with scenarios like um like the night scenario or harmony that boosts a lot of your opponent's unit and then plays against your game plan it's just really nice um yeah i think that's pretty much it mask of boros put some put some crows on the board for like your kelpie your that kind of beast value there it's a little more consistency as well um and you can just discard something like a seagull maybe you don't want to play two seagulls in the same game or you just have it and you want some more playable cards and maybe you've thinned out your bricks, right? And it can just be nice. Um, just be good value. And there's not like a lot of other, um, any of the other TAs I'd really want to play. You know, Magic Lamp's just kind of a, I like the thing is more important than that one extra point from Magic Lamp. Um, Curse Scrolls too low tempo. Ceremonial Dagger doesn't make sense. We don't really have any uh, engines for Crystal Skull to protect. And then Tactical Advantage is just, again, I, I value the thinning more than the one point in round one. Yeah, that's pretty much the deck. Let's get into some games. All right. Somebody else is interesting. Okay, I'm on blue coin. Pretty nice. Let's see. I need to be careful. I'd like to answer Aquan if I have it. This can help. But I also. Oh, no bricks. <laughs> Pretty rare. Um, I also don't want to really use leader charges because it's going to be hard to get bloodthirst. This can actually. If I set this up first, I can just use one leader charge. I don't want two of these though. Okay. The lock is fine. So. Raging Bear would be best to start with. But again, if they do have Aquin, then this could just be better. Hmm. I only lose one point because I have Seagull. Okay. Proactive Warrior. Actually, beautiful. Oncrate Warrior here. Don't want to do this right away. Okay, there's the Aquan. I mean, they see this. Let's see. I can just kill this. Click and glutting slash. I can always use one leader charge, but like I said, leader charges are pretty important. So I'd rather just do this. I also want to get the seagull back, I think. You don't draw into a brick, which is nice. I'll put the seagull down. 
into the grave, and then we'll just kill this. Was a bit of an overkill. Dealt six, six damage to her. And then at one point, I think a tree inch can spawn in this row. I can play a Kelpie. It's a Fove. Or they just play into it. Oh, they're gonna. <laughs> that's pretty funny. They're gonna keep the the wolf. I'm gonna have to high roll three times. So. Go <laughs> Kraken. Kraken's crazy. Let's see. Let's see, if I want to play in this round, I should lock this. They did already commit Aquin. If they have a Purify, they, have, they it doesn't matter them purifying the infusion, but... I do not mix words on principle. And this way Roach comes out too. The Dryad's Caress ties us, I think. So it's three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, they're going Simless. Simless double Caress, that's aggressive. <laughs> Gives more vitality to the wolf. Alright. Hmm. So, it looks like I'm losing on even. Kelpie... I don't play too deep into this round. They just spent Simless. I mean, yeah, I got them Purify, so they played it for a reason, but their hand might be pretty good. So I could just trade some of these beasts, set up my Flaminica. Oh, it would be good to have beasts in other rounds too for the Kraken and for Kelpie. So I do just pass now. I have one beast. <laughs> so I'm gonna call be a six next round. Let me play the Savage Bear at least. Try to get a little bloodthirst. Do so I want to play Feral Bond? Can I play Harvest from Hand? All right. So they did just want the Purify. Another threat. Yes. That would fit perfectly. Hmm. So if I crack in now... Let's see, if I crack in here and pull these three up front... I can't really kill it, except for like... A lucky feral bond. I mean, not too lucky. I guess I can use some leader charges to get bloodthirst. Hmm. You play like Kelpie Kraken. I'd rather just pass. Two committal. They still could win the round. Alright, so I lose uneven. That's kind of fine. I didn't spend a lot and they spent Simless Aquin. Nope. Okay. Pretty good. So I'm looking that. Axel would be nice here. I have one brick. I don't really want to draw stove though. And I have some good stuff with Kelpie Crack in here. It's Flaminica. It's not too bad, it's a 10. It's, I mean, 10 for 7, that's okay. Alright, I think we're fine with this hand. We'll see if they even push. They likely do. Let's see, they have to use some deck, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I could just open Kelpie here. But I'd rather play Raging Bear first, of course. Hmm. 
This could help me set up an earlier Kraken too. While they're swarming. Probably save this for like a tall, uh, what's it called? Hamadryad. Not sure if they'll expect tall punish from me. Okay, there's a second harvest. Yeah, I think their last like big card is like Ethne. And then they could have like a forest protector too. It's more like point slam rather than like a round controlling threat. So rather rain the back row, crack in the front row. So I can move this Fractionette eventually. This likely gets rebuked. Hmm. Oh right, you can't cancel the Kelpie. Ha! But they also might want to protect this young Dryad. So I'd probably crack in now. It's good for the Kelpie too. I could play these like cheaper beasts though. But I can I mean it's just good. And they still have like other nature cards to like tree ends to pop out in the back row. <laughs> exactly not enough. But it's fine. I have a bunch of other cards to play. And if they don't kill the Kraken, I can even just kill it now. If they don't boost the Kraken. That is. I don't have Champion's Charge to punish this, unfortunately. But that did spawn in the back row, which is nice. I can always heat wave the Kraken since they wanted to boost it so much. It does give me a head, but... Six... So this doesn't get me ahead. This does. No, it doesn't. Flaminica does. I can also play the wolf. It's actually pretty good. Into, I think I go just Brockfire Warrior. Like this, this, and then that's gonna die anyway. This is never dying enough. Okay, there's another beast for the Kelpie. I'll play half for next. But this isn't really mattering. But I'll play half through. To that. Well, now if they pass, my fish stay stay out anyway. But now I can click this too. It's more rain value on the kelpie, but also keep the fish on the board. Forgot the kelpie. So I still had clicking this. Now I have more points in the flaminica. But let's just play the bear. Do this and this. I want to make them believe I have a tall punish on that, which I kind of do with the heat wave. Not an ideal key wave target. Okay. There's the forest protector. <laughs> Why do they roll elven seer? <laughs> so I'd rather play the heat wave now. Again, not having champions charge is very sad. I could even use two leader charges here. So I'll just take the heat wave. Should be better now than in round three. Let's see, let's say I play a tempering on this. And this is like a 9 10. So this is still better. Sorry, Kraken. <laughs> you got boosted. I have a squirrel either to punch this on Shaping Nature. You wave around 3 on that could have been fine. I'd rather play the Flaminica here and then. Okay, so I keep my card. <laughs> the fish. Okay, so I can like 
Fakusha Kelpie and then get the fish back. I have a pretty good short round if I can just draw the Sove. If I could just... If I could... <laughs> it's gonna be a tall punish. Okay, we draw the Sove. We even have a Squirrel for him to get. Axel It's one of the bottom three cards. It's probably better than a lock, but they did go double Caress round one, so maybe it's not. I mean, it's just a good hand. Yeah, I think we'll keep it. Okay. Although Jangi, I would want to go Sove before Jangi. So I could even open Sove. I probably do actually, because then it puts the Bloodthirst on the board, sets up Champion Charge and Lock pretty nicely. Hmm. But the one thing with that is they could play into that same row, like they could row stack, and then I don't get as much rain value, where I could actually set up rain targets for the the little bad rain. I mean, again, they have the tree ant spawns, but so maybe I just open Flaminica. I don't think they have a serpent trap. Hope I didn't speak into existence. Yeah, we missed Axel, but we're kind of just fine with that. Okay, there's the Ethne. So, let's go Sove now. And then we'll go for Kusha. So that's one. I think it's two here. Yeah, look, I did have a squirrel. I don't think I can greed to get like a six point so They don't have an answer because they're devotion. Unless they have Serpent Trap. But if they play a trap, I'm discarding this, so... So look, they ruin one of my Bloodthirst. But we can still lock. I think we do lock that too. I mean, it gets two turns. Hmm. They could... I don't think I can double nature. It would be more of a threat, though. It's fine to just lock it. Frog mating season. There goes the bloodthirst, but there's nothing bigger than a five anyway. So now we'll go Kelpie. Let's see, Kelpie. I think Kelpie is just better. Pulls out the fish. Packer could also pull out the fish though, but it's a six. I'll definitely stay out. <laughs> Killed one frog, but I, mean, I don't care about the frogs, but they're pretty good with, um, what's it called? Uh, their echo card, Shaping Nature. Yeah, because they can just use the vitality and get extra value. So I'm just going to get a 5 on this. I didn't get full bloodthirst, unfortunately. Let's see, alright. And then we get a little bit more rain, but no more beasts. Alright. All the forest. To gourd, little gourd. Alright, it's close, but not quite. Nice. My right, short round. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, GG. All right. Back. Nice, nice. All right, let's go again. Ah. <clears throat> Okay, Patch Slot of Fury. I'm not sure what kind of deck they're playing. I'm a blue coin. A little unfortunate. Stratagem and Opener could tell me what they were doing. Okay. Squirrel should be good either way. Squirrel's usually good against Galaga. Okay, no bricks. Decently playable hand. Nice proactivity. Yeah, I like this hand. Yeah, seems fine to me. 
So we'll open Raging Bear. Okay. Bloody Eagle. Okay, so it's just Warriors. So I probably just squirrel that. Honestly. I don't have a ton of consistency. Do I need to do it right away though? So what's my discard target with this gutting slash? Let's see, this can get like a what's it called? Mm -hmm. Bran. Or a tier. I might have to like fully or tier. They shouldn't have a ways to boost things, so that should be fine. So I'd probably leave this. I could also just lock the tier. I think better. So let's just go squirrel. Also puts a beast on the board in case I want to play like Kelpie. Let's see, I'd probably discard this gutting slash. This does answer Herald, but maybe this does too. Heat wave. I have a lot of control. Which I don't really need in this matchup. can always just kill these half roos and this kelpie, so the kelpie I'd want to get more value with right away. So let's play this half roo. I want a long run with the kraken. We draw the fish. I think we just put back the gutting slash. Yeah, it's not really getting a... it's not really doing a lot. This is pretty sad, especially when I have actually half rain value. So I would like a long round, but you know, it depends how much I play into this one. So they're not ahead. But I could also get double rain value and thin out one of my fish. Getting slash doesn't kill these right now. So let's play the second half roo. And then I think I still rain this back row. I'd like to do it earlier than later. That's nice. So we still have some good points to come in. Yeah, let's see, this can answer to you, this one of these can answer Bran. Oh no, okay, okay, one of these can answer the tier target. So... So, I'm still ahead. But it could just be worth it to play Kelpie. Especially before they have damage 4 with these. So, I think we'll just play Kelpie now. See, I don't have a really greedy Sove anymore, though. I'll have to keep one of these Savage Bears in the deck. This thins out this Anglerfish too nicely. Okay, Vabjorn. They can't really go Warp. They can't go Warp Plans. But it's 11. It does kill the Kelpie, though. So it's not quite enough to get ahead. I did miss the Wolf. Come on. Which I can see now. Alright. Hmm. See, without last say, one of these cards isn't going to be as good. So I get a heat wave. No warlord. I could just do this though. Let me click this. Just champions charge this five and then get the rain and get the the fish. Not the fish, the wolf. That other beastie. <laughs> so unless they go Sove, I don't know that they can do it anymore. 
because they have nothing to herald or Fakusha. Or War of Clans. They also have Leader, I guess, for Tall Punish, so that was a little bit bad. Maybe I should have just played Anglerfish. I probably should have just played Anglerfish, honestly. Did the rest cancer the other so they still need some good points here like let me like let's see you do it they need nine it was doomed tier they're gonna play tier for carryover that's a little crazy and they're still not ahead are they gonna take the tie <laughs> oh warriors no they're gonna go down two cards okay Interesting. Interesting maneuver. Can I get ahead in one though? I guess I'd play Axel. This fish back. If they pass, they just play Axel. I still get last say. Double Feral Bond. Pretty good. Seagull should get good value too. If they bleed though, it's a little awkward. Can I put one of these back? Still have other good cards. They can't really bleed me either. <laughs> I mean, they, okay, yeah, they can't. Okay. So, yeah, I just play Axel here. It's not a bad res target for Fukusha. Just need to draw Fukusha. So, this lock isn't doing a whole lot. I need to keep one of these bears in deck too, let's not forget. Okay, I drew the Fakusha. I need to draw Flaminica, and that's my only brick, so I can just mulligan it freely. Okay, and Flaminica. Alright, we drew the Flaminica. We drew- Oh, Sove! <laughs> oh no! Okay, so we missed the Sove. But we have last say to just kill the Kraken at the end. Um, okay, how do I open here? Just open Savage Bear. So we didn't draw the stove. <laughs> that is bad. Alright. You can say there's nothing else to lock since Tear's gone and just play this Jengi. Took some pretty aggressive mulligans. Just never drew the stove. Mm. So there's not even a tier target either, so Heat Wave's like a 13 here. It could be more. By killing the Herald. These I should be able to get full value on. I do have like a Champion's Charge. So, don't really want to... Take away our... Take away points here. I mean, maybe Heat Waving Herald is just better. Also, Fakusha Axel just early on. Kind of fill up the row a little bit. Can we just heat wave the Herald? It's probably more than that. I don't think I do. I also, should be playing on the melee row to brick their Sov. Not brick, but. Block it off. I can put a lot of units on there for melee row. Hmm. I can move three, seven. I can put nine units on their melee row. I also played it this early Fakusha. It's okay. So I think we'll play Seagull here. It sets it some bloodthirst. Do have last say, so this heat wave's fine. I'm gonna use one of these feral bonds to kill the kraken. Let's play the seagull now. <sighs> mm. 
Okay, they're going in the back row, so I want to move things to the back with Kraken. So I need them to get one thing on the front. I mean, again, I would like to block the front. Okay, that's pretty good. It does take points away from this row, though. But I could Kraken now. Either Kraken now or Fakusha now. Kraken doesn't add anything to my side of the board, which is nice. And these are good units to pull to the back anyway. We'll throw this into the wolf, into the row, though, eventually. I can just play this Feral Bond here and kill the Herald. There's nothing in the range row, I said. <laughs> so now I either play... okay. That's nice. So... I think I crack in the back row here. Although I crack in the front, Again, that fills up the row pretty nicely, but not enough. Okay, so I really have like no points on my board, which is nice, I can be uninteractive. play a lock for nothing. So now I can Fakusha on Axel and just go wide. Plenty of turns too. Oh, and the wolves. Bad timing on those wolves there. But the turn nearly gave them nothing to do. The Jengi is a little- I mean, I played by Jengi as a 7 as well. So, you know, we got some similarities there. Just gonna take the big champion's charge. Not champion's charge, getting slash while we have it. Let's see... I want to put stuff on the rain on the melee row. I don't really need um, these leader charges too much. I just want to save the last one for this feral bond, which I want to do kind of late. It should be like Sove and Champions charge though. So let me just do this now. Mm, but if, if okay, I don't want to let them kill this though. I don't want them to kill this either. I just like a six point heat wave. But if they play so f if they play so first then this heat wave gets better. Can I just do this? Okay, they do get this fish back. I can also put this in the front row. Oh it's Yordle. It's not champion's charge. So this should be so I think it's the wolf. Alright, so I'll just do this. And then I think Brockfar Warrior is the best here. Although Brockfar Warrior actually only does three damage to this. Or no, it won't do enough damage to that. So we'll just take this axeman, I guess. Damage by three, it should work. Run! 
Okay, and this card should be Sov. I think we beat a Sov. I'm not sure if we beat a Sov. Their leader's worse than mine. Because I could have gotten one other point by using this first. Fish only goes back for one point, which is fine. Oh, it's a stunning blow. They missed the so they don't get to kill this. Alright, nice. And we still had crop of Meneka leader. Nice. <laughs> so they missed they missed the so because I squirreled their bl blood eagle. Cool. Alright, cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. Ooh, nice. Eight MMR. Alright, then we'll go one more time. Okay, alright, Onslaught Pirates. Probably Golden Ecker. Blue coin. Not ideal. They can be very aggressive on red coin. I would have liked to win on even as well. But it's fine. Alright, so one brick, one unplayable card, and another brick. Cool. Alright. Alright, cool, no bricks. Let's open half row. Squirrel can we get against Axel? Although they probably go Spell Blood in this matchup, so I'd like to win round one, push out the compass between one round one and two, and then Squirrel. That would be ideal. If this half row survives, we can get the fish out, but we want to do it at the right timing so that they don't go back. Because I want that, I want the points in this round. I don't have Sove to be aggressive. Or Kraken. Kraken would have been nice in round one here. So I have a lot of point cards. That's a little strange. <laughs> so this is just... Like, they have to like leader it still to kill it. So... Play a Savage Bear. I've got no points on this row. Not sure I understand that move. Probably just discard this eagle. But I don't need to do it yet. That's pretty good. I guess now if I click it, Cataclysm will spawn on this row. But again, unless they have movement, then I'm definitely just not playing into that row. A vial. Okay, they just played the vial. Let's get some value there. I don't have tall punish. I have a champion's charge, but that can just be an answer for anything. So they're just playing a little bit unitless, but they're also not playing anything into this round. So let's discard the seagull. Let's see what I got. I get a second half through, which is very nice. And I will be playing that. I haven't played a gold card yet either, so I still have Roach to come out. Might play a lock if they play like some kind of boat. They've only damaged one unit. Decree, alright. Coral, so they're kind of a discard package version. Hmm. Doesn't mean I can random multiple rows though. So just like that, they almost catch up. I don't even need it. I was thinking I could jam the Kelpie, but I don't even need to. I could just do this. And then maybe go feral bond here. Oh, my fish are gonna get <laughs> my poor fish. All right, let's just play this feral bond, and then we'll go raider. Warlord's kind of interesting. I could kill the wolf on impact. Make my gutting slash and champions charge a little bit better. It's a three now though. But this is like a s kind of a six. Might be a five. And this is probably a four. I think we still do this. <laughs> the fish. <laughs> some sad fish. And the seagull comes out too. I right, maybe they can take some damage and then just pop back into the deck. That could have been- oh, I could have locked that, I guess. 
let's see. If they play Bjarna, I'm punished. But if they don't, then I don't even <laughs> need to play it. Cause if they played had Bjarna, they'd probably play it. So. I can even let these go back into the deck. They'll go to the bottom, so they just kind of carry over for later. They use a leader charge. No, they're just trying to high roll. They actually high roll decently there. So I could let these go back to the deck. See, right now I'm still ahead. I get three points. But Kelpie is just good. As long as Roach behaves. And again, if they had Bjorn, they would have played it. So let's do this. It's a little late for Kelpie, but they just, you know, they probably would have answered that a different way if they could. Roach behaves. We'll just hit the Corsair. Also, just hit this. This is worth zero now. It's kind of worth it's worth a couple with Kelpie actually. So I'm just gonna hit the armor off. I have a lot of points anyway. All right, Kelpie help you buff stuff. Got rain going for the rest of the round. What there's for gutting slash. Okay, they use a leader charge, so they get some cataclysm. It's okay. They're probably. Hmm, I don't know what's the cut for coral. And tear sex skirmisher. And they probably play more cards, discard stuff if they're playing these two. I mean, it's thinning. They still play Decree, right? I think I saw. Yeah. They're playing Golden Necker now. They get the compass now. I can scroll. Even if I'm going down a card, it's just worth it. <laughs> 3, 2, 1, right in a row. So I get to scroll the compass, which is very huge. They also have to play Bjorn. They lose <laughs> Kyronex and Skirmisher. They don't even have Adrenaline for a mentor. Bear Witcher, they don't either. Okay. That was a bit crazy. Kelpie survives. Again, we go squirrel. Easy squirrel. And I get ahead. I don't go quite ahead, actually. So, maybe I could have played something else first, but there's not really anything to play there. Getting slash, I guess, could have gotten an extra point. But let's let them. Yeah, right, because we still get Cataclysm one more time. Probably keep this other Feral Bond. So they've committed Golden Ecker and they've lost their compass. And they lost their Unicorn Chironex combo. And they've spent Bjorn. Coral is, is a pretty good card too. And Heron Her Her Kaduk. Not sure what else. They don't have a lot left. They play Mardrum. There's no armor here. But with the Kelpie values, they hit the wolf. That's pretty cruel. So I'm just gonna gutting slash this. So this is five, and then I get another four. So again, I'm not quite ahead. But again, they don't have a lot of power left, so I'm fine to just go for a long round card down and just you know, go a little crazy. They probably play Curse of Corruption for Sov, though. Let's see, do I have... I still have a four in the deck. Four, one, and an eight. A lot of gold still in the deck. I can even go for Kusha if I wanted to be a little crazy here. <laughs> 11 point ship. Okay, they killed him. So I just played the Jengi here. It's probably my best lock target anyway. And I have another lock also. And as long as this. Yeah, I'm always getting ahead here. It does hit one of the armors, unfortunately. Actually, they sniped my, my wolf. I don't think I can get it back. Is Warmonger a warrior? Or is it just a pirate? I think it's just a pirate. But I'm thinking of the one that does 3 damage, or um, damages the whole row by 1 if you have Bloodthirst 5. Because I could get Bloodthirst 5 with 1 leader charge. Or not e yeah. And then play this Feral Bond and I would get it back that way. But I don't think so. Okay, they go to Siri Nova. Can't punish that. 
They don't really have a lot of power left to 2 0. I can't go Brock for a warrior with this. I'm also gonna be losing my fish soon. No, I don't, I'm never losing the fish. This is one, and then even if it's zero on their turn, it'll be one on the end of my turn. Let's see. Let's go drum and berserker here. Okay, I got the wolf back, so I do get ahead. But now I just pass. I was hoping to ping the shield. Siri. It just makes things better in the next round. Okay, they actually get out. Okay. Nice. So I win the round. They spent everything. They have Siri Nova, so they will get last say. Unless I can bleed them properly. They have a dead unicorn. Probably just pass. There's nothing else to bleed out of them. I could heat wave the Siri though. And then it's kind of the same as not playing anything, but the heat waves might be better here. Good Mulligan Kraken for now. So I can answer a boat this way. Axel's kind of nice. So I can just heatwave this. That would be great. This could even be a good Fukusha target. It's probably the best one though. Am I getting better than an 8 on the heatwave? Especially if they don't have compass. So I don't think so. Let's just see if they have something for Octave they can, they can throw down. I have a really good short round. Although again, they do have a Curse of Corruption for the Sove. But then that means Flamenica gets through if I can draw it. It's in a bunch as well. So you know, I have to be mindful of keeping self targets in the deck. So they play a ship. So I could just I could lock it or I could pass. see I don't really have a way to answer the Kraken anymore except for champions charge but I also don't want to draw those I want to draw like Flaminica, Sove and then probably not a Kraken maybe baby champions charge is still good in round three maybe like a savage bear or a raging bear for eight so I don't know that they play red ships maybe they have to cut them for the skirmishers so this lock this could be the best value on the lock I'll do proactive round one or round three I could just lock it now, shorten the round a little bit more. I think that's fine. Oh, I guess this is a card I could have mulliganed. For like a champion's charge, ideally. I play a Curse of Corruption now, they don't know I have a Sove, so now I just pass. <laughs> and then I should just be easy win. What else is in their hand that they don't want to play? Like, Terror of the Seas? They played Bjorn even? I don't know. Okay, I'm looking- I think- Oh my god, it's a perfect hand. <laughs> this is so much point slam, it's crazy. So we don't get to play Kraken this game, but Kraken would have been best round one. And then I don't want to go for a long round three really. They do have a, a long ship. But that's just kind of fine. I can just even lock it. But I'd rather play a bear first. Yeah, sequencing matters a bit. They get Bjorn on one card. So they overthinned. Bottom card more card. Let's see. So 
could just do this. I think going Fukusha on Jengi is the best here. It's like 7 plus like 8, 9, 10 here. You get four turns of rain anyway at this right, the right time. Let's see, I played the Raging Bear, so I can actually kill the Kraken, but killing the Kraken doesn't boost. I oh, they play an Invader. Yeah, killing the Kraken doesn't get so value. They'll just, they'll come back and I'll boost by two, so it'll be eight. That's just worse. <laughs> so they played Chris of Corruption, so I just go Sove now. Mm, let's put 13 on the board. Let's go Axel, I guess. Hits the boat nicely. So now I can just do single leader charge, so... <laughs> Hit the single unicorn. Oh, I actually can't do that anymore, but it's better than going Flaminica here, I think. Yeah, let's get... Make sure we get less armor value. Savage Bear. <laughs> Thanks for spending your Curse of Corruption. So these are probably the cards they saved. Maybe it was Bjorna and they don't want to play Bjorna so early. Could be a pretty big Terror of the Seas. But I think I'm just fine here. And then it's Flaminica. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no, 5, oh, 6, 7 ish, I think. This is like an 18. They played Surrender, I saw. Got it. Nice. <laughs> Play that when I had my wolves out. So again, they should have a pretty huge boat here. You know, even if it's like 22 though. Ooh, it is! <laughs> yeah. So, giant boat. Surrender did well for them there. I got them like four, I think three points on this. Hits the stove too, but didn't end up being super close. But having the squirrel at the right moment for the compass was great. That, their compass was just so, so bad. No, it's because they had to play Golden Echo around too. Nice. Or Golden Echo round one. Alright, cool. Nice. Good MMR there. Yeah! <laughs> so there you have it, folks. We got the Battle Beast deck. Um, so it's such a powerhouse of a card. It's also... Um, I think it's nice when you have like a finisher like Corrupted Flaminica and this kind of Rain Beast deck to also have other tall units as well to kind of... Um, kind of make up for your opponent having tall punish potentially, and so it's great too. I mean, of course you have to, you can only be answered through like Igni or like Curse of Corruption or you know Serpent Trap potentially, but you know something that's like hits the highest tallest unit or Scorch. Um, so so a little extra defense too, and being able to just save uh, leader so for like a short round is so many points. Um, we also have other Flaminica, yeah, again is another kind of finisher short round option in the stack, and long rounds are fine too because we've got the Kraken and um, Kelpie value for rain. And I went over this before, but um, after the games, I like to, of course, go over the deck a little more and talk about how it performed and stuff like that. So I really enjoy this deck. I think it's a fun way to play rain and beasts. It's less heavy on the rain, but which makes it nice because you're not playing as many engines like the messengers and stuff, and they don't get answered. So you just kind of point slam um, all throughout it all. And I like this version too with the heat wave. And the Feral Bonds. I think the Feral Bonds are really good in Rain, um, especially with the Kraken, where you can use them to not only get your wolf back that you're putting into the Storm Row, but also play any Skellige Warrior, really, to finish off the Kraken. Because that's kind of the main, can be the main problem, or the main, I guess, uh, thing to figure out to get that Kraken back to your side, because it only does three damage to itself. So there you have it folks, I hope you enjoyed the deck and the video, please like it if you did, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and happy Gwenting.